If you're wondering how calculus can be told as a Minecraft bedtime story, you have come to the right place. Hi everyone, my name is Ken, and in today's video, I will be sharing with you a bedtime story to help you relax and at the same time, get the core concept of calculus, one of the most fascinating branch of mathematics and one of the most intimidating high school subjects at the same time. So please make yourself comfortable and let's get started. Once upon a time, our story begins in ancient Greece. Although many would think that mathematics is full of abstract concepts today, at the time, it was much simpler. It focused on things right in front of them. The study of shapes, in other words, geometry. Because of this, finding the area of a shape is one of their important interests. So, how do we find the area of a circle? At the time, one mathematician, Archimedes, proposed a controversial idea. If we divide the circle into eight slices, we can rearrange them into a shape that looks kind of like a rectangle. Now, if we divide the circle again, but this time into 16 slices, we would create a shape that looks even more like a rectangle. He suggests that if we continue cutting more and more slices, going from 8 to 16 to 32 and so on to infinity, then we will eventually get a shape exactly like a rectangle and thus the area of the circle. However, many consider the concept of infinity to be impossible. There's even a saying amongst ancient Greeks that if we want to cross the room, we can technically walk half the distance, then half of that half, and then half of that half again, and so on up to infinity. So we must take an infinite number of steps to reach the other side of the room. However, since we cannot take infinitely many steps, it implies that we cannot cross the room, giving us a weird paradox. Later on, mathematics find application in areas such as physics to investigate how an object's speed changes. In that case, we need two points in time to determine an object's speed, which is the change in distance divided by the change in time. But what about the speed at a specific point, say at precisely 6 seconds? If we take a small interval around that exact point, Measuring the change of that interval, we can get a sense of the exact speed if we make the interval small enough. So, technically, by making the interval infinitely small, we should be able to arrive at the exact speed of that point. Notice something here. In both the area of a circle and the object's speed, there's a hidden similarity. In each case, we are looking at something infinitely small, yet somehow, these infinitely small things can be used as a powerful tool to understand the world. This idea to understand the large by studying the infinitely small became the core of calculus, but for many centuries, no one has yet formalized this weird way of doing math. In the 1600s, the world was changing. Telescopes were aimed at the stars, ships crossed oceans guided by new maps, and science was starting to ask not just what happens, but how and why. At this time, two brilliant minds discovered the same hidden secret and finally brought calculus to life. Their names were Newton and Leibniz. Newton, working in England, was fascinated by motion. He wanted to understand how Apple falls, how the moon orbits the Earth, and how the planets orbit around the sun. To do this, he needed to measure change. How fast, how far, how much, at every moment. Meanwhile, Leibniz in Germany approached the same problem from a different perspective. 
He imagined dividing change into infinitely small parts, quantities he called differentials, and then summing them up to find totals, which he referred to as integrals. From these two opposite directions, Newton and Leibniz reached the same key idea in calculus, one splitting motion into parts, and other recombining it from those parts, and thus the tools of calculus had been created, differentiation and integration. If that sounds complicated, think of it this way. Differentiation is like asking, at this very moment, how fast am I moving? Integration is like asking, if I keep moving like this, how far will I go in total? There are opposites, but also partners. One focuses on the small details to understand the moment, and the other adds up the small parts to grasp the whole picture. Together, they help us describe almost anything that changed, the speed of falling stars, the curve of a rainbow, or even the rise and fall of your heartbeats. But at the time, many people found this idea unsettling. Infinity was still a weird concept to science. How can we trust results built on something we cannot see, cannot count, and cannot even reach? For over a century, calculus exists as a kind of beautiful mystery, astonishingly useful, but built on a foundation that seemed almost magical. But in the 19th century, mathematicians like Cauchy provided this magic with a solid foundation. They defined what we call limits, a way to discuss approaching something closer and closer without actually touching it. And with that, the infinite became something we could understand better rather than just dream about. From that moment on, calculus became the quiet engine behind modern life. Every bridge you cross, every airplane that flies, every phone in your hand, every image sent across the world, all relied on understanding the motion supported by calculus. It helps us describe not only motion, but also change, in how trees grow, how light spreads, the shape of sound, and even the evolution of thought. The subject of calculus is not just about numbers on a page, it's about noticing how the world flows, how things grow, shrink, speed up, slow down, connect, and transform. It is the mathematics of movement, of infinity, and the instant. A story of how we learn to measure the unmeasurable.